even after making a lot of microphone review videos and related videos and developing an addiction to microphones that I have no interest in seeking treatment for, there are still a few, a handful of microphones that have never been featured in their own review video that I've just never, for one reason or another, made a video about. So I thought I would combine them all into one review video for one, two, three, four, five different microphones. And then the, then I will have covered all of the microphones that I have in review videos, review videos. Just to emphasize, there's no specific reason that these haven't had their own videos. They're not lesser microphones by any means. And I'm going 2-0 run all of these microphones through the Rodecaster Duo. And they're gonna be on either the condenser or dynamic setting with no effects and no processing. I think I've got three condenser mics and two dynamic mics here. So this will be a dynamic video indeed. We're not gonna be going in any particular order, just the order that I wrote them down in my notes which was pretty random. So we're gonna start off with the neat King B2. So you've been listening to me on the Sennheiser MKH-50, which is my typical out of frame boom microphone. And now you're listening to me on the neat King B2, which is a neat microphone that is beautiful to use. This is a condenser microphone. It has a really great price, I think of $169. When I've done microfew comparison videos in the past, this microphone always sort of gets a lot of attention, it, whether it's a live stream in the chat or a video in the comments, people kind of notice this microphone. It sounds pretty great. It is a very heavy duty microphone. It comes with this very solid, very nice shock mount. And it also comes with a pop filter that clips on the top of the microphone. So this is what it sort of sounds like if I turn the microphone around. And again, the MSRP is $169. This is what it sounds like if I turn the microphone around and away from me. You can also sort of hear how the shock mount helps it to be a little less susceptible to handling noise but it's you know nowhere near the sm7b levels and then if i'm talking into the microphone peter piper pitched a podcast you can definitely hear a bit of those plosives but of course if i place the microphone at a slight angle from me then peter piper pitched a podcast once the pop filter is on there it's not even noticeable so i've just left it on the entire time that i've had the microphone and i've had this microphone for, since it came out i think almost two years ago now so it's been a while and it is a, it's a really awesome microphone. It comes with this little pop filter, it comes with the shock mount, $169. I think the reason that I haven't used this as much as I would normally like to personally is just because it is so heavy and mounting it on a boom arm can be a little tricky, especially if you don't want it sort of just in the way. I might've found a solution to that though, which was recommended to me in my video about the Lewitt LCT240 Pro. This adapter right here, the Audio-Technica AT8459, is this really cool heavy duty ball adapter thingy. And it's not cheap, it's like 40 or $50, but it's super sturdy and then it can support and let you position microphones however you want them. So now that I have this, I might be able to try out the King B2 again in my setup and it might not be too heavy for the boom arm, but that that is kind of been it. If you're on a tabletop stand, like these little Samson stands that I use a lot, then it's it's pretty great other than a little bit of that handling noise or tabletop bumping noise but it is a phenomenal sounding microphone and again i've got no effects no processing nothing like that happening this is just the signal straight out of the microphone there's no controls nothing this is what you get and then you can add in some processing and stuff so this is the neat king b2 and now we're back on the sennheiser mkh50 as we switch over to our next microphone Let's put the B out of here, I don't wanna get stung by it. If you do wanna hear a very in-depth mic comparison that includes a lot of these microphones, check out my PodMic USB versus 26 other mics video where you have my voice and my wife's Heather, my wife Heather's voice on 26 different microphones, including most of these ones here if you really want in-depth comparisons. But for today, this is the Sennheiser MKH-50 and this is the 512 Audio Skylight. And I really like the way that this microphone looks. It's a side address microphone, just like the King B2. It comes with this shock mount and it has an MSRP of $199. It also, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. It's pretty good at rejecting plosives, especially if you don't have it directly in front of you, but it does come with this little pop filter as well that just kind of goes right here. And now Peter Piper pitched a podcast. It really does help to eliminate those plosives. It seems like, I don't know if it's the mic or the shock mount, but it seems like it's, 
does a bit better of a job of getting rid of like table noise and that sort of thing happening there. Uh, but one thing I will say, take this off. I feel like this does change the tone. So if I talk into the mic without the pop filter and I put the pop filter in front of it, as is typically the case, it kind of gets rid of some of those higher ends, tames them a little bit, which I think usually sounds pretty good. But for the sake of this video, and since I haven't seen a ton of videos about this microphone, I'll use it without the pop filter so you can hear the natural sound of the microphone. It is a condenser, so just like the King B2, it's running off of Phantom Power through the Rodecaster Duo. Now I do have the instruction manual here because I wanted to give credit to 512 Audio for writing a really, really good instruction manual. There's a lot of like tips and info and really helpful stuff for positioning the microphone, using the microphone in all kinds of different ways. There's one thing I learned that's really cool and it's a pro tip in this instruction manual. If you prefer not to block your face with the pop filter for visual reasons, you can still easily address plosives by adjusting the angle of incidence. This is a fancy way of saying move the mic. Angle of incidence. So when I'm talking about all the times of like having the mic at an angle, angle, angle of incidence is the correct term. I never knew that. As an exercise, place your hand in front of your face and say the word pop over and over, pop, pop, pop. Now move your hand slowly to the side as you speak. You'll quickly notice that you only feel the puffs of air, puffs, puffs, puff, pop, 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 when your hand is directly in front of your mouth. Simply move the microphone over to the side while still pointing your mouth. You'll sound as great as ever, but won't be bothered by annoying pops. Moving the mic and using angle of incidence will also convince your friends you went to audio engineering school. I like it when companies take time to do decent documentation and provide lots of helpful info with their stuff. So uh, good job, 512 Audio. Now we're gonna jump to a semi-ish related mic to the Skylight. This is the Warm Audio WA47 Junior. So it's not that they compete that way, but the two companies from, at least how I understand it, are kind of the same company. You have Warm Audio and you have 512 Audio. I think 512 is the more budget-friendly arm of Warm Audio, kind of like Squire and Fender, if you're familiar with instruments and guitars and stuff. So this is the Warm Audio WA47 Junior that we're going to be using next. It's another XLR condenser microphone, but it has, it's the most complex, probably the most complex microphone that we'll be checking out today. So again, you're listening to me on the Sennheiser MKH-50, and now you're listening to me on the Warm Audio WA-47 Junior. This microphone, I got, I, the reason I got this one is because I saw that one of my favorite bands, The Interrupters, use this microphone on several of their albums, and that's why I wanted it. I think they use it as a vocal singing microphone, not a spoken word microphone, but it's a pretty versatile mic that can do a lot of different things. The MSRP, this is the most expensive one we're looking at today. The MSRP is $299. It does come with the shock mount, which is an okay shock mount. It's kind of like the Rode PSA. I'm pointing back there because the Procaster's in one. It's kind of like the Rode PSA M, like the, their standard shock mount, but it's not quite as nice as the Rode one is, but it's fine. The microphone does have some little switches on the side because it does a few interesting things that none of these other microphones do. It does let you switch pickup patterns. So right now I'm in the cardioid pickup pattern, sort of like the standard pickup pattern, which means as I turn the microphone away, you're not gonna hear me as well. You'll sort of hear me sound extra weird behind the microphone, and then we bring it back around and I start to sound like myself again. But there is a little switch on the front here that will let me change the pickup pattern. So we do have a figure eight pickup pattern which I'm using right now. And what that basically means is now we have pickup happening in front and behind the microphone. So if I turn the microphone, my voice should start to disappear. And now I go behind the microphone and my voice comes back. So there we go. And we can turn all the way around right there. So that is the figure eight pickup pattern. I'm gonna go back to cardioid because just like the Skylight, this has an amazing instruction manual that comes with it. This can be used for spoken word or music, but I really feel like it is geared more towards music applications. And a couple of the ways that it says you can use this figure eight pickup pattern, which would actually be this pickup pattern, where you can still hear stuff behind the mic over here, would be if you had multiple mics in the same room and now you're kind of like crossing their patterns and picking up different things or different instruments, or of course, if you have two people or two vocalists or something on one side of the microphone and you wanna pick them up clearly through one mic. Now the other option is omnidirectional pickup patterns. So now I'm talking into the front of the microphone, but as I turn the microphone, my voice doesn't change. It still sounds, I guess if you were just listening and not watching this, you wouldn't even know that I'm turning the microphone at all. It's just picking up my voice the same from every direction. But of course, 
because it is picking up every direction. There's so much more reverb and room tone because it's picking up everything from everywhere versus the cardioid pickup mode, which is a lot more isolated and, you know, it sort of rejects a lot more of that room tone. And speaking of rejecting, this mic, I think so far of the ones we've done, does the best job of not picking up too much handling noise. We do have some switches on the back as well. The first one is a high pass filter switch, which is basically a good way to get rid of low rumbles. So sometimes if you have somebody with a really deep voice, it can kind of get rid of some of that low rumble. But also if you're in an environment where there just is, I don't know, wind noise, air conditioner noise, some sort of low rumble, you can flip this high pass filter. There we go. And now what that basically means is it's stopping some of the low end frequencies, I think it goes to 70 Hertz. And then the higher ones get to pass over that that blockade that shows up there. So this is what it sounds like with that. It definitely sounds thinner, but it's supposed to because we're removing some of that low end. I'm gonna switch back now to the microphone's full frequency spectrum. And this is what that sounds like. I think on my voice, I like this more than the other one, but it's all just personal preference really. And then the other switch is a negative 10 decibel pad. So basically that's going to sort of turn down the signal by 10 decibels. So if things are just getting a little too loud and a little too crazy, something that can definitely happen when recording things like music, you can flip this other switch and it's just going to lower the signal a little bit so that way you're not getting a clipped, blown out signal. I can see right now, I am so much quieter <laughs> than I was before I flipped that switch. So again, this is something you'd probably use more often than not when recording music, not so much with spoken word. But I think that is a really cool thing to have built into the microphone. I turned it off right now and went back to my normal full volume. But where things get even more interesting with this is what this microphone is all about, the WA-47 Junior. This took a little bit of research on my part, and I, I'm still not an expert at this, but there is, within the world of microphones, a 47 capsule is sort of regarded as one of the best sounding, highest quality capsules there are. The microphone that I think might have been the one to make that popular, or at least the one that most people think of, is the Neumann U47, which is a $9,000 microphone that has been around for a while. So I just wanna clarify a few things that I've done a little bit more research, and yes, it is the Neumann U47 that popularized the U47 capsule, which was developed after World War II, and my $9,000 price tag is semi-accurate, but depending on which kind of U47 you wanna go for, I found some for up to $30,000. So it seems like the sky is the limit. So suffice it to say, it is a very legendary and very premium microphone capsule. This is a $299 microphone. It's not trying to directly compete with the $9,000 microphone, but the idea behind the sound and the capsule is supposed to be similar to that. It's supposed to reproduce that sound. I don't have the Neumann U47, so I cannot compare it to that. Warm Audio does make the WA47, which is a $900 or $1,000 microphone that is a tube microphone that is more of their direct competitor to the U47. Where the 47 Junior comes into play is that it is way more affordable. It's only $300. And it does not is not a tube microphone. So it's just a regular condenser microphone. That means you can run it off phantom power. Tube microphones are really tubular and super cool, but they're also a little more difficult to work with and you have to wait for tubes to warm up and there's different parts of the setup. There's a different power box. It's more complicated than just plugging your XLR cable into a roadcaster and hitting you know, the condenser button to use your microphone. So this is a more affordable, simpler version of a 47 capsule to kind of get you at least in the ballpark of that sound at a, at a way more reasonable price. This is a very cool microphone though, and I would really love to play around more with using it to record amplifiers and things for instruments because I think that would be really, really fun. Now we're back on the Sennheiser MKH-50 as we go into our last two microphones, which look very similar, but are quite different. And these are also dynamic, not condenser microphones. So I go in here and turn off phantom power and the first microphone we're looking at is the Samson Q2U, which I have included in several other videos. This is probably the best like starter microphone that you can get. It's one I recommend a lot because the MSRP is $69 which is a really nice price. It's super affordable. It comes not only with the microphone, but also with this clip, with this little tripod, with a USB cable, and with an XLR cable, and it all comes in a little bag, case, pouch thingy. So you're pretty much all set for 
a really cheap price. There are cheaper microphones out there, but in terms of reliability and all that stuff, I really like the Samson. And I did say USB because it is a USB XLR combo mic. I am running it through XLR right now, but it is the exact same sound quality via USB. So you don't need a mixer or anything. This is the only USB mic that I'm using today. So it can just run straight into your computer. The only downside to that is it is a mini USB cable, which is very old and outdated. It comes with a cable, so you at least have that, but it's not as nice as something like USB-C. And then the other things with this mic, as you might notice as I'm moving around, it is very susceptible to handling noise, which is unfortunate because it, it looks like a handhold microphone. Like if you grip it really tight and you don't move it too much, it's not bad. But even if things touch the cable, it gets prone to handling noise. And it's also Peter Piper pitched a podcast, even though there's a pop filter built in, still very susceptible to plosives. It does also, I forgot to mention, come with this little windscreen. So once you put the windscreen on, you're not gonna deal with plosives nearly as much. You do have an on off switch, which is very cool. It acts as a mute switch too, if you're using it as USB. And I can even use it right now. And now I'm turning the microphone back on. You do have volume up and down for your headphone output because you do have a headphone output on the bottom which works with USB, not XLR mode. But it's really cool on a small mic like this to have XLR, USB, and a headphone output on the bottom. And it's basically the same size as like a standard non-USB XLR microphone. So this is a very decent setup that you can get for a very reasonable price. And I think it's a great place for a lot of people to start out. It's also something that, that you might outgrow the microphone. Maybe you want different sounds or different style or something, but it's something that can be useful a lot. It might go from your main microphone to your secondary microphone, or maybe you have a microphone that's your main and you wanna get a second one for a guest, but you don't wanna invest in the full price again for a microphone that's only gonna be used sometimes. This is great for that. It's a great travel microphone because of the USB functionality and the price. You just can't beat the price. It works really well. It sounds very decent, I think. It's, it's a little... It's almost pod mic -y in its harshness, but I think it sounds fine. You could just EQ it. Again, I have no EQ going through this. You can't argue with anything about the Samsung Q2U for the price. So any complaints I have, it's like it's like the movie Hot Tub Time Machine when people are upset that like that movie was stupid. It's like it's called Hot Tub Time Machine. You got exactly what it promised. This is a $69 microphone that comes with like a whole bunch of accessories and has USB and XLR functionality there's really nothing you could complain about. This is the Samson Q2U. Back on the Sennheiser MKH50 as we switch over to the last microphone. I've included this one in quite a few other videos, but I only recently got one of my very own that I didn't have to keep borrowing. And this is the Shure SM58. There are different versions of the SM58. Some have power switches, some have wireless, but the sound quality is basically the same. This is the standard $99 version. There's no controls on it. There's no USB functionality or anything like that. And this is what it sounds like, the Shure SM58. This is, I think if you took somebody, it's like the Stratocaster of microphones. If somebody doesn't play guitar and you ask them to think of a guitar, unless it's something crazy like a Flying V or something, I think they probably imagine something that looks like a Stratocaster. I think most people, if they're not familiar with microphones or audio gear and you ask them to think of a microphone or draw a microphone, they're probably thinking of something that looks like the Shure SM58. Even the Samson Q2U, it's pretty obvious where they took their design cues from because yeah, this was significantly smaller, but it's very similar. And of course you can use a pop filter with it, although it's not nearly as susceptible to plosives without it. And I'm sure all of us throughout our lives have seen many people use SM58s with no pop filters because you don't need it. It's designed to work really well on its own and it is way less susceptible to handling noise. It's still, you know, still going to happen. But the ability to just hold this microphone and talk into it without any of that weird handling noise is great and uh, less grating on your ears because it doesn't sound unpleasant. And it's $99, you can just buy this microphone and you're kind of set for a really long time to come. And it does come with the little clip, like a clip kind of like this one, but it doesn't come with anything else. You're paying for a classic Shure microphone that will surely last a very long time. And speaking of things that are sure awesome, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And speaking of things that will last a long time, check out this super long video, the super in-depth mic comparison. Even though it's centered around the pod mic USB, there are so many microphones, so many different comparisons, and you have a male and a female voice on each of them. So check that out, and I'll see you in that video.